Hey, everybody. Glad to be with you. Uh, I got my friend, Pastor James DeMello with me. Hey, awesome. Well, Pastor James has James DeMello Ministries. Uh, he's the uh, um, inventor of the return. I, I don't know how else to say that. The founder. <laughs> How's that? The inventor. <laughs> and uh um, and of course, many of you guys have been through the return, and so you know who Pastor James is. And if some of you are watching and have never seen Pastor James, he was actually the first guest speaker I ever had in the church back in 1996 uh, when we first opened up the church. And good friend, uh, we hunt together, uh, just known each other for nearly 30 years. Um, and so I asked him to come and speak with us, and so we're gonna we're just gonna do that. We're gonna hang out with y'all and uh, talk a little bit. And uh, he's got some really cool notes he sent me and some great ideas. So we're just gonna take off and see where it goes and we're taking you on the journey with us. And so James, you wanna say hi to everybody real quick? Good to, good to talk with you guys. Love Michigan, lived there eight years of my life. Two of my children were born there. And so uh, miss it, it's my, uh, my second home. And uh, but Texas is doing well. We're uh, we're handling this thing well. Um, our family's doing well. Everybody's healthy. The church is going strong. Yeah. Uh, still um, doing the uh, online service, but it's working well. Um, and so uh, God is good and God is near, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Amen. Sounds good. Awesome. And so Texas is starting to open up a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jim's opened up yesterday, so. Oh, wait a minute. Stop. No. La, la, la. <laughs> They've been opening up for a few um, weeks now, but now it's more than 50 capacities. So things are getting sub somewhat back to normal. Good. Next next month, we're going to be starting the returns and mm -hmm. the awakenings, the first awakening next, next month. So because uh, camps are opening up, we'll be able to do camps next month. So... Um, we're excited to get back to whatever normal is again. Uh -huh. <laughs> get back to it. Well, good. Uh, maybe, well, that gives us hope that Michigan will open up sometime this yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> From our governor to yours. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, do you have your governor email my governor? <laughs> good people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have your people call my people. Uh, Awesome. And, and of course, we're praying for our governor. And, you know, it's a tough job. I don't think I'd ever want to be a governor of a state. You know what I mean? I just think it'd be so hard. Governors everywhere are going through a lot. <laughs> they really yeah. are. I mean, you know, how do you deal with this? You know what I mean? And, uh, and of course, you know, it's easy to be an armchair quarterback in this whole thing. And uh, so anyway, yeah, that's a whole nother story. Okay. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. Okay. Well, I love this. There's a quote by Aristides. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correct at all. And trust me, Pastor James has no clue either. Okay. So me. We just know he was a good man. He was a Christian statesman. Um, so we know that much. Yeah. And when we get to heaven, he's probably gonna go, man, did you butcher my name? But anyway, let me read this quote to you says it is he's talking to the emperor okay so this up he's talking to the emperor he's reporting back on the christians because the emperor can't understand how christianity is exploding during the worst of persecution so this is his report back to the emperor go ahead paul all right it is the christians O emperor who have sought and found the truth for they acknowledge God. They do not keep for themselves the goods entrusted to them. They do not covet what belongs to others. They show love to their neighbors. They do, they do not do to another what they would not wish to have done to themselves. They speak gently to those who oppress them, and in this way they make them their friends. It has become their passion to do good to their enemies. They live in the awareness of their smallness. Every one of them who has anything gives ungrudgingly to the one who has nothing. 
If they see a traveling stranger, they bring him under their roof. They rejoice over him as over a real brother, for they do not call one another brothers after the flesh, but they know they are brothers in the spirit and in God. If they hear that one of them is imprisoned or oppressed for the sake of Christ, they take care of all his needs. If possible, they set him free. If anyone among them is poor or comes into want, while they themselves have nothing to spare, they fast two or three days for him. And in this way, they can supply any poor man with the food he needs. This, O emperor, is the rule of life of the Christians, and this is their manner of life. Oh, Lord. I wonder what report he would give of the church today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what would he be able to write today? Because this is an example of living for the kingdom of God. Yeah. You know, this morning as I was praying and stuff, and I was just having some fellowship time with the Lord, and the phrase came up, you must be about your father's business. Yeah. And just like Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. And yeah. I was, and I started to ponder that and talk to the Lord about it. And it's like, he's going, you know, you're a son. Yeah. Doctrinally, you can talk about it. He says, but in your verbiage, you don't talk that way. Mm. Mm. And so I'm just about my father's business. He is my father. I am his son. Amen. And, and, and I think what the Lord was getting across was, is, do you really believe you're my son? And would you be willing to tell others that, hey, I'm about my father's business. And so I can heal the sick. I can give to the poor. I can love my enemies. I can do these things. Amen. Because I'm empowered when I'm about my father's business because I'm representing him. Yep. When I pray for the sick, it's not my power. I'm yeah. just going to bring to you the kingdom. You know what I mean? That's how Jesus did it. Yeah. yeah. So That's we, good, Paul. Yeah. So that was my meditation today. What would you get? <laughs> God, I didn't get that deep, but I did get some good. You know, the, one of the statements in that letter that really caught my attention that I've been teaching the men, because... These uh, the, these notes that we're going to be talking about today, this this um, teaching, it really came out of a series uh, that I've been doing with my men called Mark Mark of Maturity mm. series. And one of the things that caught my attention, and it's what you're experiencing with your your statement about doing the Father's business, is he says they had awareness of their smallness. Yeah, and that is humility. Yeah. Walking in humility, walking in, in, in that humble spirit, um, that, that is so important. That's a mark of maturity. Yeah. And walk in the humility because when, when you walk in that humility, you walk with the knowledge of God's kingdom and you're representing him everywhere. And so, yeah, we may not agree with what some people are doing and some leaders are doing. But we have to be always thinking of the, what, what I call this little message, God is near, the nearness of God. He's near. He hasn't, doesn't leave us, doesn't forsake us. And in the scripture we're going to read in Philippians, he, it talks about that. It makes that statement, God is near. Mm. He's near to the brokenhearted. He's near to the humble, right? Yeah. That's the proud. Um, he, and so I want God near. Mm -hmm. I want God always close and always feeling and sensing his heart for whatever situation. And that's going to take me walking in the awareness of my smallness. John the Baptist said it this way, I must decrease so he can increase. Yeah. It's far, that's hard for anyone, but, but we need to decrease. We, today I was teaching the men about, about, you know, putting the flesh under, mm -hmm. um, nailing the flesh to the cross that that's what it takes 
to be mature men. We need to put the flesh under. And, and, and the, body, the believers of, God, of the body, we need to always walk in that awareness of our smallness. And so I, 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 that was something that really stood out when you were reading that letter and when I first read it. But right. if you want, let's read the, uh, the text. You want to read the text? Uh, we, we can. I just really liked what you said so much. And I've seen this displayed in your life, which I really love. You know what I mean? And, you know, I made a joke there in the beginning because, you know, God gave me a download. You know what I mean? And I could yeah. do that with you because you totally get it. And, uh, but I just don't want anybody to misunderstand. I wasn't like really, truly challenging James. Like, okay, I heard from God today. You know, did you? And uh, But the cool thing about it is there's times where God is just downloading to Pastor James. I'm just going like, I got none of that. I am so glad <laughs> I am so glad he heard from God because I'm in the situation going, wow. It's, <laughs> I'm glad it's not dependent on me right now because I'm giving you nothing. And Pastor James goes, I think we should do this. And I'm like, praise God. And uh, Voice of many waters. God's yeah, ex exactly. Uh, let me ask you something, James, because like in your life, I, you know, I've seen you, I've seen you have to do this in your own life many times, you know what I'm saying? And as we all do, uh, and having to humble yourself and, um, and even change your vocation and ministry and, yeah. and, 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 you know, um, you know, so many times and even some changes that are going on in your life even now, but it's like, how do you humble yourself? Because it can be scary when change comes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one thing constant in life. Change. <laughs> change is, is, is just part of life. And, and my mentor, the late Ed Coe, used to say, change isn't change until it's change. And maturity comes with change. And we don't like it. We don't. We fight it. But we got it. It's, it's part of life. And, um, you know, the statement that Pastor Mike, our pastor here in Texas, um, who was the founder of Covenant, said years ago, the willingness to be something small and something big is better than trying to be something big and something small. Right. And I just, I'm just happy and glad and honored that God would use me to be something small of something big as his kingdom yeah and and that keeps me grounded that helps me stay aware of my smallness uh i i just want to be something i want to be part of what god is doing and whatever that part is if it's a small part as long as it's a big thing we're doing you know yeah. we're touching big lives we're touching cities you know new new wago and in, in newport and all that area in that area uh, Fremont and all of that. So, I mean, you, you're touching. You used to have a message I still remember to this day, thinking big in small places. Yeah. And that, that, is, um, that is powerful. That's, that's, a, that's being aware of your smallness, but knowing you serve a big God. Amen. Willing to be whatever part that is, whatever part of the body, a finger, an arm, a leg, a voice. You and I are, have been honored to, to be a, a, a voice, uh, even though we butchered the English language and we, we, and I have speech impediments that I battle, it, it is God. You know, it's God who chose me and I can't deny that. <laughs> I know, it's so funny because like, you and I could mess almost anything up and yet God just comes through like so strong. <laughs> We're living proof. God can use it. I love it. And, and, and yet, you know, God has blessed us and, you know, and given us wisdom and given us strength and done all these things. But, um, you know, it's just amazing that, you know, greatness really does come because we have a great God. And when we yield to him, you know, it doesn't matter how small it is, you know, if you yep. being, um, Oh, gosh, what was the guy that went to Paul? You know, the Lord showed up to him and says, go to, you know, Paul, lay hands on his, you know. Uh, oh, Ananias? Ananias. So, I mean, you think about Ananias' ministry, really, it was really small, but he, man, he heard from God, he obeyed, 
and the Apostle Paul came out of it. I don't think you hear of him anymore. I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah. Unless he was married to the Sapphira, because then it didn't end well. <laughs> yeah. Instrumental in the, in the life of Paul, you know. Um, yeah. And, and so our yes is so important. No matter how small it might seem, just obey. Do what God says to do. Amen. 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 Oh, cool. And so why don't we read our text and let's take off from there, James. Why don't you go ahead and read that? Philippians 4, verse 4 through verse 8 in the NIV, it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's a key phrase that I want you to grab on. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present in your request to God and the peace of God which transcend, transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And here's why I felt this was an important text. Um, because I'm sure, like you guys in Michigan and other states, New York and all of that, and even Texas to a certain point, we can get so focused on the negativity of mm -hmm. our government, of our governors, of our leaders, and that's all we talk about. Mm -hmm. that's all we talk about. And we don't realize that that is distracting us from what God wants us to focus on. And he gives us a list of eight things in here to focus on. Mm -hmm. Why does he want us to focus on it? Because it brings peace. It brings peace. It annihilates anxiety and, and all the things that people deal with right now. Anxiety and depression um, are at an all-time high. People are ordering more Prozac than any other time wow. in the right now. Uh, you know, mental hospitals everywhere are filling up. I mean, we, we have a... Um, a, a a women's batter, battered um, center here, they can't take any more mm -hmm. because of what's happening at home. They can't take any more patients because they're over, overwhelmed. All of that comes from what you focus on and forgetting that God is near. And so there's so many great things in here and, and, and Pastor Paul will pull some things out and I will pull some things out, but we just wanted to share that those scriptures with you to tell you that he is near, it's right in the middle of that scripture, but that there's some key things to dealing with anxiety. And you, we're gonna learn from rejoicing to walking in the presence of God with thanksgiving in our hearts. There's so much more things to be thankful for right now. If we can focus on those things, mm -hmm. the fact that you're healthy, the fact that your children are healthy, the fact that, you know, so many things that you have a church that's still online right now, that is still ministering, a pastor that is still hearing from God and still ministering, still leading. Gosh, that's incredible. That's incredible. There's churches right now that pastors are not there for their people, but yours is. And that's, being, that's something to be thankful for. And so um, I, that's kind of the text, and then we'll build from there. Paul? You know, I... I, I love I love this portion of scripture, you know, because you know, one, don't be anxious, don't be, you know, anxiety. Okay, well, that's you know, that's easy to say. Yeah, uh, James, don't worry. But okay, you just lost your business, or you know, or maybe you know somebody is sick in your family, or you know, whatever. It could be any number of things. The words are easy to say to somebody else, but we're responsible for our own lives. 
Yeah. And when somebody says that, hey, don't be anxious, this, what, this is what needs to come to mind. One, the Lord is near. You're not alone. He, he's right there. He is right with you. He is yep. hearing your prayers. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, and the, and the things that he, you know, he talked about. And, and obviously, you've got a scripture in here about Paul. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And, Paul is this from a deep understanding. He's in prison while he's writing this. <laughs> I heard a preacher say this recently, and we're preachers, but you know, sometimes I have to go, I don't agree. <laughs> but <laughs> it's online. Man, if you're not nervous, if you're not worried right now, if you're not anxious about things, you're you're, you're you know, you're some kind of some kind of robot. You're kind of you know, and I went, Well, I'm not worried. I'm not anxious right now. It I can be, I just focus not to, I choose not to mm -hmm. because I've been through a lot. Hmm? I've been through, you've been through a lot. God has come through then. He's faithful then. He'll be faithful now. And so I just choose to guard my heart and keep it at peace mm -hmm. because anxiety and fear doesn't do any good. Right. So I, I'm just to think of whatever is true, whatever is noble, you know, whatever is right, you know, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. And I think, you know, like at those times, there's times where I've woken up in the night and I'm just full of anxiety. I mean, there's so much pressure on whatever finances of the church or somebody's dealing with sickness and you're really trying to pray for them and try to help them and, you know, just whatever. And I have to get up and I think about these things. In other words, I believe that all those descriptions there, I just got to remember when God did it in the past. Amen. That's lovely. That's pure. That's of a good report. That's noble, just, you know, whatever. And yeah. when you do that, you're building your faith to be able to then come against the, the attack because Satan's trying to get you. Fear will come not when you're thinking of others, but when you're thinking of yourself. Amen. Say that again. That's powerful. Fear and anxiety comes when you're thinking of yourself, not when you're thinking of others. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if I keep my mind on praying for somebody else or helping somebody else or, you know, what can I do for them? I won't be, you know, because I can only be that way if I'm focusing on what's happening to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Paul's a great example of that. If he was focusing in on his problems, oh my gosh, we would have had, you know, a lot of letters that were contrary to what he wrote. Yeah. I can't believe they put me here. I don't deserve any of this. I can't believe this happens. I gave my life to God. I tithe. I'm just preaching the gospel. And God, why did you let this happen to me? Why is this going on? Exactly. Well, that's an immature response. Yeah. And Paul never had that response. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, I would love to say I would, I'm right with Paul. You know what I mean? But sometimes I'm not. <laughs> you got his name. I got his name. I'm closer than you. <laughs> Except you were his brother. You were Jesus' brother. Yes, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, Paulness. You know, Paul gives us ingredients of what it takes to keep a peaceful mind, a noble, you know, a noble thought, a, a, a whatever is true and right and pure. And he begins by both in his situation with Paul, with, with Silas in the prison, chained to the, to the walls and shackled in the story of how God broke the chains through their praise. It all starts with praising God. I, I noticed that the minute anxiety and fear starts to weigh me down the only way to lift it off of me is through praise through worship putting on some music going for a walk um man that 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 is the key to the presence of god is is having a bible says come into his presence with a thankful heart right yeah. notice how many times paul says rejoice again i say rejoice well paul is remember writing this from prison so he's learned this. He's learned this in his situation with, Paul, with Silas when they, were, when they were jailed and chained. He's learned this when he's been persecuted. 
and stoned to death and rose again and all the things he went through. I mean, he is a poster child for guys that were able to get back up during rough circumstances mm -hmm. and rejoice and praise God in those moments. And man, I'm telling you, it is hard to do at first, but the minute you do it, and every time I've done it, mm -hmm. God lifts the weight off of me, lifts the pressure, the, the oppression off of me. And it's the key. I love the message. It says this, the, the password to God's presence is thank you. <laughs> password to God's presence, presence is thank you. That is good. And that is always uh, the key to, to, to God's presence and his nearness is yeah. thank you, God. Wow. That is so powerful. And, you know, Paul felt that pressure. And that's why he said, rejoice. I know how to deal with this, everybody. Okay, why? Because I am experiencing pressure all the time. You got to stay rejoicing. You have to be thankful. You have to be thinking on the kingdom, not on you. And, and you know, I deal with that. You've dealt with that. I've dealt with depression. I know you have. I was suicidal. I know you were. Oh, yeah. And that heaviness, oh my gosh, you know, sure, it's tried to come upon me again. But I put on the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness, man. And that is what is going to get rid of it. And I think that's what this whole thing is talking about, you know. Yeah. Praise in the midst of circumstances, you know what I mean? Yeah. And rejoicing is different, different about being happy, you know. Yeah. Paul says rejoice in the Lord. He doesn't say, notice he doesn't say be happy. Happiness is based on circumstances. Happiness is, I said this years ago, is based on something happening. Mm. But, but joy, the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, is entirely different. It's based on the inner strength of knowing that God is near, that he never leaves you. As you said a few minutes ago, he never leaves you. He's never left me in the past. He won't leave me now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. The faithful God of the past will be the faithful God of the present and the future. He yes. doesn't change. He's a God that's, that's one thing about God. He's constant. He's you know, in, in, all of, in all of this, right, the things that we have as believers, even though the world is changing, everything's unstable, economy's unstable, people's health, they're fear of that, their security's gone, you know, all these things. We have something that has never moved and never will move. And that is the kingdom of God and his word. Yeah. Yeah. Unshakable. And that's what's going to give us that unshakable spirit. Yeah. And, you know, in here and in your notes, it says, guard your heart with the peace of God. Yeah. That uh, we have, we have a responsibility with this thing. Yeah. It's God, you know, we can't go, God, guard my heart. Yeah. God, take this from me. No, he says, you guard your heart. Yeah, we're to be bishops of our hearts. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Of our heart, protectors of our heart. I know, you know, um, how are some ways that you guard your heart, James? Well, some of the ways I guard my heart is what I listen to. Mm. What I listen to, what I watch, uh, all of those are ways of guarding my heart. And when the thoughts come, because thoughts are like wind. You, you can't stop wind from coming, but you can direct wind. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was one of the, I don't know if it was C.S. Lewis or one of those guys that said, you know, I can't stop a bird from flying over my head, but I can keep it from building a nest in my head. Right. And, um, and that's like thoughts. It, guarding my heart sometimes is catching a thought, as Paul said, and, and putting it under the subjection of, of Christ in these eight filters. I call them filters. When I catch a thought that's being negative, that's constantly ricocheting in my mind, and it's, it eventually will come and drop into my heart. To guard my heart, I gotta, I gotta battle it here. I gotta stop it here. Mm -hmm. and I have to filter it. I, I start telling myself, is this something true? Is this something lovely? Is this something noble? Is this something praiseworthy? Is this something, you know, and I just go through the list 
And I go, no, and I throw, I have to throw it out. Mm -hmm. And I start thinking on the things that, as Paul teaches us here, that is good because that'll bring peace. That's what he says here. For then it'll bring the peace that surpasses all understanding. So my peace to the world seems, seems a cyborg. I don't feel things. No, it's because my peace surpasses all understanding. I feel anxiety. I feel the things that everybody feel. I hear the things. I just choose to filter it through the spirit of God and, and his wisdom and, mm -hmm. you know, in his peace. That helps guard my heart. And so putting good things in your heart, putting things, good things in your eyes, putting good things in your, in your words, uh, watching your words as you're so good at over the years you've you used, you've taught me a lot about that. Your words, your words, your words. It's life and death is in our words. And sometimes we don't, you know, we don't watch our words. Just, just today or yesterday, I was doing something. I was writing a, a devotion and my computer just died. And I lost everything. I had to rebuild everything. I was up late trying to rebuild the notes for my Tuesday morning uh, power hour with the men. And my wife walked in, she says, why, what's going on? I go, man, my computer dies. And then it died again while I was talking to her. Oh. Looked at her and I said, oh my gosh, if I lost everything, I'm gonna go nuts. And she looked at me, she says, don't say that. And I go, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna be upset. <laughs> I just had to watch my, I had to change my words is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. But yeah. What, that, you know, that's interesting because it is so important. Um, James, we're going to wrap this up here pretty soon here, but um, you know, one time I was, uh, I don't even know what the subject was anymore. I just remember my wife's response because it was indelibly etched in my heart. And I was saying something, it was negative. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she goes, well, I believe you can have that. She walked out. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> and, and she was just like, I, she was basically, she was saying, I'm not agreeing with you, but if you want it, you can have it. It is yours because that's what you're believing and confessing right now. And I'm out of here, you know? <laughs> Thank God for Colleen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's like, you know, sometimes we need reminders or whatever, but life and death are in the power of the tongue. And I tell people all the time, the way you respond in the beginning of a trial will determine its duration. Yeah. And right in the beginning of this COVID, you know, 19 thing, uh, we got together as a church and we prayed over our county. Well, in our whole county, there's only 35 people that have gotten it. And out of 50,000 people. Of course, that's one block in, 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 in Texas, but I mean, you know, um, you know, but it's like, I believe it's because we prayed, we had an initial response, you know what I mean? And yeah. our church is blessed. Our church is doing well, even though it's online, people are growing. I'm getting testimonies from people all the time, the things that God's working in them as they've been at home and, you know, and watching and things like this. Of course, we're all looking forward to the day coming together because church is coming together and we've got a great plan for that, by the way. Yeah. And, um, and it's going to be awesome. It is really going to be awesome. And we're looking forward to it. But I'm so proud of our church because literally so many have grown. And even some of the ones that have struggled have really just, no, nah, yeah. You know, I mean, they once once you counsel with them for just a little bit, man, they're right on course. And yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to do good, you know. Yeah. And, um, so I'm really proud of our church. They've done really, really, really well. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I love this message. Yeah, I believe great days are ahead for Resonate and for Covenant and for churches. I really do. God doesn't waste a crisis. He doesn't waste anything. Right. He always uses it for our good. Um, he doesn't cause it. He doesn't allow it to, for, to, for our, our teaching. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, not, not, not pain and circumstances, but God uses it. Mm -hmm. because he's god yeah but he will not waste this crisis he's never wasted it in the day of moses yeah and he won't waste it today 
And I believe we're going to have more growth in churches than we ever have had. We're going to have more uh, commitment to Christ, more people getting saved. Um, I really do. Because this has taught a lot of people and, and myself a lot of things. The church is more than the walls. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, are, we, are, we are the people of God. And, and we're, we're continuing church, even when gathering, though that's important. And Paul said not to forsake that. And that's why people are going to be so hungry for it, because I think we took it for granted that we gathered together and now we have been separate for so long. I think people are desiring fellowship, desiring koinia, as the Bible calls it. And so there's going to be a hunger for people to come together. There's going to be a lot of hugging going on. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of handshakes. There's going to be a lot of, you know, pats in the back. Because people are hungry for what they took for granted. Um, I think I, I, I'm in my neighborhood, I don't know about yours, in my neighborhood, I've never seen more fathers throwing the ball and football with their kids mm. on the lawn, walking around, riding bikes, playing sports, our little lake in front of our house. I've never seen so many people around that lake, maybe one or two over a year. Now there's hundreds um, mm. a week. I think that's good. I told Misty, if that's what all of this did, drew families together, mm-hmm. made fathers focus on their kids more, uh, then man, it was it was worth it in a way, you know? Well, in the end times, you know, Malachi says you can return the heart of the father to the children and the children to the father. Yep. And I think there's a lot of really healthy things that are coming out of this. I know for me and what the Lord's showing me about our church personally in the future, I'm actually glad this happened because it's going to make us better. Yeah. And, you know, not glad that people got sick, not glad that anybody died. I'm just saying, I think it's a wake up call for the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for that, I'm thankful. And in every situation you can give thanks, you can not for the thing, but in everything. And I think it's learning to really learn how to look for what the kingdom is working in me or in the situation or in myself or in others. And I think that's what Paul is saying here. And I think that's how we guard our heart. Again, I can't be full of anxiety or fear if I'm thinking of others. I can only do it if I'm thinking of myself. Yeah. And I think that's so important. So anyway, James, would you uh, maybe close this out with, you know, prayer or maybe just a last exhortation to the church and, uh, and just thank you so much for doing this, man. You're awesome. Oh, I love it. I love Resonate. I love you, Paul, and all the people there. Follow- and everybody pray that Misty will want to move to Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We'll keep praying for that. Lord, I just thank you right now for all, all your people there in, um, in Michigan resonate, Lord. I just thank you that you are moving in, in their midst, that you are near, that you don't forsake us nor leave us. That's a promise we can take to the bank. That, Lord, uh, you love us. You love us so much. And, God, that all these things that we're going through, that you will not let it be wasted. You will use it for the good. As your word says in Romans eight twenty eight. you will turn what the enemy meant for evil, you will turn for good. And you will, for the people who love you or call to your purpose, Romans 8, 28 says, you will work it out for our good. So God, we don't know how, we don't know when exactly, um, but Lord, we know that you are behind the scenes working this out somehow. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you. You're praiseworthy. You're noble. You are all that Paul said in these ingredients. And so, Lord, we, we don't want to be anxious for anything. We all are anxious for everything to get back to normal. But, God, if our normal in the past was abnormal, we don't want to go back to that. We want to go back to a better future. Yeah. And so, Father, we thank you for that. Let us be aware, uh, always be aware, aware of our smallness. Be humble before you. Mm-hmm. Trust you. Guard our hearts rejoice even in the times of circumstances rejoice lord god not in the circumstance but that you are going to come through for us Mm -hmm. we thank you that we can lean on you father in these times i ask you to bless all that are there 
Bless them, keep them, cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace and cover them with that precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, Pastor James. And thank you for everybody uh, joining in with us today. If you need prayer, um, you can text get prayer uh, to 41411 and we'll gladly pray with you. We love you guys. Thanks for being with us. Pastor James, thank you. Love you. Can't wait for you to see you in person. Bye-bye. Bless you.